So once again, I welcome you all in the name of Yeshua Mashiach. Uh, today, we are going to start chapter 3. That is special letter, Dagesh. Uh, in that Dagesh, Dagesh Lene, Dagesh Forte, Rafe. So all this we are going to learn today. But before that, uh, uh, how many of you submitted assignment number 2? I first of all request you all to please start your video. So I have not uh, submitted my second exercise. Oh, I did not because I missed two classes. Okay. I'm going to show uh, today this uh, assignment number two. And uh, those who have submitted, uh, please check. Okay. Read the first question. Which vowels are known as full letter vowels? Can anyone tell me? Which vowels are known as full letter vowels? No one knows full letter vowels. I think there are uh, five vowels. Yeah. Uh, Sereyod, I had written just now. Sereyod, Herekyod. Kamethe, Shurek, Bolam, Wow. Herekyod, Sereyod. Sereyot. Really, it is comet say. Then second one is Olam Wow. Turek. Turek Yor. And Sereyot. These are the five full letter vowels. Why are they called full letter vowels? Can anyone tell why they are called full letter vowels? Because they use consonants in its formation. Yeah. Uh, they use consonant in its formation. They use consonants. In their formation, to create a vowel. That's why it is called a full letter vowel. And now, uh, very important thing is that consonant becomes silent. Now, comets hey, hey will not get, give it sounds as a consonant sound. Uh, wow, wow will not give it sound as W. Yod, yod will not give sound, sound as Y. Sere yod, again, yod will not give it sound as Y. They use consonant to create a vowel. Therefore, this. Uh, these are called five full letter vowels. Now, circle the atom in each group which does not belong to an explain. First, Hirekyod, Polam, and Shurek, which you will circle. Sure. 
Sere. Sere. Reason? It's not a full letter vowel, yeah. sir. The only vowel which is not full letter vowel. Now, in second, which you will circle? Sere, then there is a Segal, Kibbutz, and Pathak. Okay, tell me uh, Segal, whether it is a short vowel or a long vowel. Short. Kibbutz, short. Pathak, short. And Sere? Sere is the only long vowel, no? So reason, the only long vowel. Or you can say the vowel can be used as a part of the full letter vowel. The only vowel which can be used as a part of the full letter vowel, Sere Yod. Then this one. Hirek, Sereyod, Holom, and Shurek. Sereyod. Here also, the only short vowel. Others are long vowels. Long vowels. Or full letter vowel. And this last one, Shurek, Sereyod, Hirek, and Holom. Shurek is a long vowel, then Sereyod is a long vowel, Holom is a long vowel, Hirek is a short vowel, the only short vowel. Then I hope this exercise uh, you have done. I will do, I will submit all the try to die on Saturday because I miss your classes. Okay. So I'm behind it. Uh, this point C, read the following exercise aloud. Be okay. sure to pronounce the vowels correctly. The sign that is this sign that is called Ole. This is an accent. Placed above letter indicates the accent uh, is on the syllable. All other words are accented on the last syllable. Okay. So already I last two, two lectures I uh, we spent uh, two lectures on this to uh, write, to pronounce it uh, loudly. So what you have to do is, uh, if you are having any doubts, you watch my two recorded session, last recorded session, uh, in that uh, all long vowel, short vowel, long and short vowel, and one syllable word, two syllable word, three syllable word, uh, we read and pronounced each and every one of them with meanings. Now here D. Uh, so you have to pronounce loudly and write with transliteration. I want you all uh, to solve this exercise uh, on a separate piece of paper. You write all these. Otherwise here also if you write, no problem. Uh, but how to write it? See here, D. D. Now, in that Dalit, there is a Begat Kephat letter. So, in transliteration, it will be D. Now, Hirek Yod. Hirek Yod is an I class vowel.
So like that, I want you to write and read aloud. D, ga, mi, be, da, ke, pu, ko, ra, wa, zu, te, you. Not only uh, read aloud, but I want you to write in translate rapid form also so that uh, it will be a good practice. For example, ga is there. Ga. So for ga, transliterated form is G. And for comets, ga. Mean. Then Beth. Uh, if you don't know the transliterated form, refer consonant and its transliteration, vowels and its uh, transliteration. And you see and write, but make sure that you write this transliterated form. And if there is no space, then write on a separate piece of paper. All long vowel, short vowel, long and short vowel. Uh, words with one syllable, words with two syllables. Any doubts regarding this assignment number two? Yes? No, sir. No. It will take time, but uh, if you know the translated form uh, till chapter five, then it will be very easy for you to recognize also. And, and when you will appear for the exam also, uh, you will get good marks. Today, uh, we are going to start a new chapter and the new chapter is third chapter, the alphabet, special letter, Dagesh and Rafe. Chapter three, right? Chapter three. Okay. Uh, those who have submitted the assignment and if you are not done transliteration, uh, so please do the transliteration and send me again. And those who are not yet submitted, I, I request you till this Sunday, uh, you try to, uh, this, uh, it will take only 15 minutes to uh, uh, question A and to solve question A and B. Only for question C will require time because you will be seeing transliteration of uh, consonant and vowels. So it will okay. take some time, but we have to solve it. I already told you, uh, basic course solving assignment uh, carries a mark. Attendance and assignment, uh, submission of the assignment carries a mark. So based on that, we'll be getting certificates. Uh, so there, there is hundred mark uh, question paper. So uh, that will be converted <laughs> to sixty or seventy. But uh, rest thirty marks you will get by assignments, assignments and attendance. After finishing chapter five. After chapter five, right? Yeah, chapter five. We are on third chapter. Very soon, I think two or three weeks, we'll finish. And then after that? So we're done now? After that? After that, I'll be taking exam. And okay. if, you, you, if you all want, I will go into the second level. Okay. 
So how many levels are so far? Uh, there are two, three levels actually. Okay. Second level also. Uh, if uh, it will take seven to eight lectures, six, seven to eight sessions, so okay. one month. We'll okay. Okay. And third level, it will take a little more time. Okay. So by the end of this year, maybe finish. Maybe. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Maybe. End of this year. Yeah. We'll finish three level if we do good, right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay. So special letters. Uh, already I taught you. Gutturals. Aleph, yeah. He, Khet, Ain, and Reish. Uh, these five letters are called 35 or gutturals. Aleph is always a silent letter also. Uh, he and Khet, they are a strong gutter, whereas Aleph and Ain, they are called weak gutturals. They are gutturals, but they are weak gutturals. But, but uh, he and Khet, they are strong gutturals. Whereas Resh is not a technically guttural letter. Resh is not a technically guttural, but although uh, it, it is sometimes called guttural. So when you will be asked a question, uh, which are the guttural letter, then you have to write Aleph, He, Khet, Ain. And you have to mention sometimes resh, not always. Sometimes resh. Why mm -hmm. sometimes resh? I uh, will give you the reason for that. Uh, this gutturals has three characteristics. And it takes special attention in second level, third level. Mm -hmm. And these three characteristics... Uh, you need to remember, you, you need to buy heart at this stage. Because if you are very, uh, if you are clear about these three characteristics of the guttural, then in second level and third level, uh, you will not face any problem. So the first property of this guttural is they refuse doubling dagesh. They refuse doubling dagesh. Second one, they prefer A class vowels. And third is the prefer compound Shiva. Now, these guttural letter, first of all, they will not receive any Dagesh in their bosom. They will not take Dagesh. Dagesh means a dot. Dagesh is a dot that is placed in the bosom of a letter. And uh, in another word, Dagesh is nothing but a piercing. It is a dot. अपन मराठी जर मंडले तर कोरुन जे बनोतत ना मंजे एक अजे नाइफ ने कोरुन बिंदी की वजे कोरुन जो दाग बनोतो तलांतर दागेश सो दिस दागेश इस कॉल्ड डॉट बाय पियर्सिंग पियर्सिंग अ नाइफ एंड दैट दागेश दिस फाइव लेटर रेफ्यूजेस out of that, never ever you will find that Aleph, He, Khet, and Ain takes any Dagesh. But why Resh is not a technically guttural letter? Because sometimes Resh, in some, some circumstances, receives a Dagesh. Resh sometimes accepts a Dagesh. Therefore, the Resh is not called technically guttural letter. Okay. Now, uh, second property is they prefer uh, A class vowels. So, always, every time you will find these guttural letters, they will prefer A class vowel. Yeah, anything? Which are the oh. A class vowel? Can anyone tell me? Yeah, but it's a put the 36. A class yeah. vowel. Patak. Comets, comets. Yeah. yeah. Pathak, short vowel. Comets, long vowel, ah. And comets, hey, further long vowel, ah. 
these three A class vowel, these guttural will always prefer. Instead of E, I, O, or U class vowel, they will always prefer uh, A class vowel. These are their characteristic. And third characteristic is uh, they prefer compound Shiva. Now, tell me which are the three compound Shiva we learned? These are the three compounds Shiva which this guttural will always prefer. They will always prefer compound Shiva. For example, the word Adonai. Adonai. First word, root word is Aleph. And under Aleph, there is a compound Shiva, Khatip Pathai. Then Elohim. For Elohim, Khatip Segal, guttural. That is, Aleph is a guttural. It will prefer Khatip Segal. So, guttural will always prefer uh, compound Shiva under them. Now, uh, I, I told you Aleph, Ain and Resh, sometimes Resh, they are called weak guttural, whereas He and Khet, they are called strong guttural. Ain, uh, sometimes it, it uh, behaves, uh, as, for example, I will give you uh, the word Gaza. One city in Israel, Gaza or our state. So that Gaza, the word starts with Ain. The word starts with Ain. So Ain, although it is a silent letter, sometimes it gives a sound G. It gives a G sound. Gaza. Then the second example I will give you Gamora. Gamora. For Gamora, the first word uses Ain. So so uh, Gomorrah is the city. Is that the same thing? Yeah, Sodom and Gomorrah. That okay. Gomorrah city, uh, the first root letter is Ain. So Ain, although it is a, like Aleph, it is a silent letter, but it, sometimes it gives a G sound. You need to remember that. And Aleph, Aleph is always silent letter. It is always a silent. Unless it is, uh, if we put a vowel under it, it will give that, it will take that sound. If we put A class vowel A, for example, uh, comets, it will take A, A sound. Hmm? So mm -hmm. whichever vowel we will put under it, it will take that sound. Otherwise, it is a part of a silent letter. It is always silent. In the uh, Genesis, if you some in some versions, uh, if you see, uh, the word starts with Bereshit. It starts with Beth, but before Beth, uh, Aleph is written in green color because it is a silent letter. And to give number one, cardinal number uh, one, for that also Aleph is sometimes used. So you need to remember the Aleph, it is a, always a silent letter, always. Mm, okay, apart from this, I will tell you. Uh, Aleph, uh, as we read, uh, the meaning is uh, strength of an ox. And uh, in Midras, uh, it is said, the uh, Jewish people wrote in a Midras, in their writing, and they wrote that Aleph is a, always a silent letter. It is always a silent letter. Therefore, it represents uh, uh, power and the presence of God. Yahweh Elohim. Presence of uh, Yahweh Elohim always. Aleph represents always the presence of Yahweh Elohim. And although he has created everything, but his presence is silent. Therefore, Aleph represents God himself. And uh, it is a saying. It's, it's not true. In Midras, they have written. Uh, there may be some reason behind it. I don't know. But uh, there came a letter of the alphabet. And all the other letter of the alphabet asked God one question. Why you chose uh, at the beginning of the Bible, 
Beth and not Aleph because Aleph represents God himself. So why, why you chose uh, Beth? So they, they asked Aleph, uh, why, why you, uh, uh, at the beginning, uh, why you, the God didn't start with you? And Aleph said, mm, I gave chance to the Beth. I gave chance to Beth because uh, uh, I want to, means uh, by giving chance to Beth, he Aleph shown uh, Aleph had shown his humbleness and God's nature of being silent. Although he has created everything, but his presence is silence. So that's why uh, he gave chance to the Beth, but not Aleph. But uh, if you remember the commandment, ten commandment, the first uh, letter, I think it starts with Aleph. And then uh, many other words, so many other words, Elohim, it starts with Aleph, Adonai, it starts with Aleph. That's extra information apart from grammar. Sir? I don't know its authenticity, but in Midrash, whatever written, I told. Excuse okay. me, sir. Yeah. Sir, that word uh, for father, you said, no, Abba. Yeah, Abba. Uh, uh, in English, they say Abba. So, mm -hmm. is it the same? Uh, see, in Hebrew, for father is Av. 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 Av means father. And for plural, they said Avot. Avot means fathers. Father. Plural fathers. Av is a singular, masculine singular father, and avot is a masculine plural fathers. So in Hebrew we don't find that word abba. Like um, so in English, uh, they always pronounce instead of uh, her they pronounce her with long breath. And always uh, one thing, if you notice uh, in Hebrew, the name of our Lord, it is written as Eshua. Actually, it is written as Eshua. But in English, in Hebrew, it is written as Eshua. But uh, in English, the, it is transliterated as Jesus. So, difference between the name, a Eshua and Jesus. Because they find no uh, uh, translation for uh, why. They, they don't find any letter that is equivalent to why. So, therefore, they... The written is as J, but I I don't say that that name is incorrect. It's correct. In in, in English, the name Jesus is correct. If you if you spell it in Hebrew, then the name Yeshua, it is correct. Okay, sir. Thank you. Sir, excuse me, sir. I have a doubt, sir. Yeah. Sir, uh, in the book of Lamentations, is it written ac uh, according to the Hebrew alphabets? Hmm. Hmm. Yes. So, what is your question? Like, uh, uh, from, from Aleph, Beth, sir, starts with... Yeah. Uh, in Psalms also, you will find Psalm 119. Uh, it is it is called acrostic psalm. Uh, you will find each eight eight verse after each eight verse, the uh, alphabet letter of the alphabet is in a chronological order. For first eight verse Aleph, then second eight verse from ninth verse onwards you will find Beth. Then. 17th once on worth onwards you will find gmail 
then 25th verse onward you will find dalek that is called the uh, they have given the number numeric number also sometimes they use that acrostic sums so giving number one two three four they use the letters of the alphabet and the very uh, interesting things about the psalm 119 is if you read uh, the psalm uh, psalm 119 the first letter starts with alef first letter starts with alef and if you read ninth verse it will start with beth it will start with beth for example i will uh, see here. ashray ashray is blessed ashray temime darek ha holekim betorat yave so ashray for that alep is used then from ninth verse if you read bame bame it's a k na ar et areko lishmor ki devareka how shall a young man cleanse his way by taking heed to your commandments so here bame bame means by what or by what what that means that is preposition plus may is the interrogative pronoun. So the ninth verse starts with Beth. So it's very interesting. Seventeenth verse of it starts with Gimel. Gemol al Abdeka. So because it starts with that letter, that's why. Uh, it is given that alphabet also, the letter of the alphabet also. Lamentation also you will find and there are some psalms. Uh, there also you will find uh, it is in chronological order. Sir, is it for till tav? Which? Uh, for, uh, the Psalm 119 for tav, uh, when it is starting with tav itself. When it's starting with? Is it the when Tav comes, is it starting with Yeah, tau? it starts with Tav. When Wow comes, it starts with Wow. All the 22 letter of the alphabet, it's same. It starts with that letter. It starts with that letter. There is so much consistency in that uh, the uh, Samisna who wrote this, this David. So there is so much consistency. He he, he wrote that by the Spirit of the Lord uh, in that way only. So can, uh, how can we write our own names in the Hebrew letter, sir? Help us. Yeah. Um, <laughs> you can write now because uh, you know consonant and vowel. Hmm? Uh, you can write uh, your name also. Uh, you uh, write and send me. If it is correct, then I will tell you whether that name is or, or the corrected one I will send. Okay. Silent letter. Again, Aleph, He, Wow, and Yod. These four letters are called silent letter. And they can come at the beginning, middle, or at the end, and they will remain as a silent letter. For example, in uh, first verse, Bereshit Aleph uh, is a silent letter. So it can come at the beginning, middle, or end, at the end, except there should be no vowel pointing under it. If it is there is a vowel pointing, then it will take that pronunciation. So these uh, four letters they are called silent letter. Sir, why is I not there in this? Pardon? 
Why is ayin not there because in this silent letter? Because it sometimes takes a G sound. So it's not technically a silent letter. Okay, sir. Then vowel letters uh, again. These four letters in ancient during ancient time, uh, and now also it is a consonantal text in modern Hebrew. If you see, uh, this is a consonantal text. Bible in origin form, it is a consonantal text. You will not find any vowels under it. And uh, how they in the, during the ancient time they used to pronounce the vowel because of these four letters they behave as a consonant they they behaved as a a e i o u consonant for example for a class sound uh, aleph and he were used for a class vowel then for e class vowel and i class vowel. Uh, Aleph and Yod were used. And for O and U class vowel, uh, Vow were used. Now, uh, we know the vowel pointing. So, column, if we put dot above, that is, it gives O sound. If dot is in between, uh, in the in that column, in that Vow, then that is Shurek. So, O and U class vowel, this Vow used. And for E and I class vowel, Aleph and Yod were used. So these four letters were uh, used in ancient time as a uh, vowel letters. Vowel letters. So it is it is desired that without vowels, without Masoretic vowel, uh, you should reach to that level that. Uh, you should read the concentrated text of the Hebrew Bible. Even in modern Hebrew, they don't use vowels. That text is the consonantal text. Then labels. Uh, these are the three letters which are called label letters. They are also called the letter of the lips. And these letters are Beth, Mem, and pay beth mem pay uh, these letters why they are called label because if you pronounce these three letters you will find your both lips moving right say beth say beth Mem, pe. You will find your both lips moving. Therefore, they are called labels or letter of the lips. Now, very important is begat kefat letter. Begat kefat letter. These six letters are called begat kefat letter. Beth, gimel, dalet, ka, pe, and uh, don't uh, you you don't need to remember this six letter just remember one word that is begat kefat everyone say begat kefat begat kefat begat so, kefat means beth ga gimel begat the dalet kefat kaf f pe and begat kefat ta so in this letter, this one letter only, these all letters are included. So you need to remember just one word, Begat Kephat. Fakta tumala Begat Kephat ha ek uzo letter hai, to lakshat thya vaisa hai. Techa mwede hai, baki chus sabi letter included hai. So. Begat Kephat. Yeah. Before Dagesh. Uh, these six letters are called Begat Kepat letter. Why? Because 
uh, these letter at the beginning or when the syllable at the beginning of the word or at the beginning of the syllable they can take a dagesh that is called dot and when they take dagesh these letters are hardened before taking a dagesh these letters are called spirant for example if i put a dagesh in each letter their pronunciation is slightly changed before dagesh this letter bet is a called spirant letter and its pronunciation is vet vet with a slight breath but when we put dagesh then it is bet b b but before dagesh it is v getting for chimel dalet um it is a uh, very slight little difference between the pronunciation although in during syllabification or according to the ancient pronunciation there is a little difference for example uh, they say without dagesh it is like g and with dagesh it is clear g g uh without dagesh it's like giving d h sound dh and with dagesh it it is d or d then kaf uh you will find a clear sound with dagesh it is clear k k but with dagesh without dagesh it's like it's it's giving a sound like kh in khet you will also find a difference between p uh with dagesh it is clear p p hardened form and without dagesh it is f p is sound in phone or it gives a f sound also ta uh, it's uh, the differentiation the sound is uh, ignored for gimel dalet and tau because very uh, little distinguishing sound almost no distinguishing sound but according to the ancient hebrew pronunciation uh, the tau with dagesh it gives clear t sound t but without dagesh it is very hard to differentiate that sound it is in between t and th sometimes we can call that sound as th okay. so these are the six begat kefat letter which can take uh, dagesh in their bosom and that dagesh it's called dagesh lene everyone say dagesh lene dagesh lene dagesh lene another letter another word for that is weak dagesh it is called weak dagesh lead dagesh yeah it is called weak dagesh dagesh lene or weak dagesh so can you spell it weak W E A K weak dagesh, and oh. third third word used is hardening dot. Hardening dot. So I gave you three names: dagesh lene, weak dagesh, and hardening dot. okay apart from except i can say except guttural because guttural doesn't uh, don't accept dagesh in their bosom so therefore uh, except guttural all the letter all the letter all the remaining letter if we put dagesh in its bosom then the consonant is doubled 
consonant is double and that dot is called dagesh potte that dot is called dagesh potte except uh, this begat kepat letter if they begin a syllable then the dot in that it is dagesh lene the consonant will not be double but uh, other consonant, remaining consonant, if we put dagesh in it, then that consonant will be double. So, if you can read this word, how will you read? Shimmer. Yeah, shimmer. Syllable is shim, one syllable, and mer, one syllable, another syllable. So, the consonant is doubled. Upon Maradit Mantuna, Zodakshir. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Dagesh Pote Mulaka Autor consonant Zoheto double Hutu Zodakshara type. Shimmer Shimmer Any doubts regarding this Begat Kepath letter? No. Sir, excuse me. Yeah. So, so if the question comes, begat ke pat letters, should we put dagesh and write or without dagesh, sir? If question comes, write, write the begat ke pat letters. Should we write with the dagesh or without the dagesh? Without dagesh, you have to write. You have to write only the consonant without dagesh. Okay, and for that per and uh, ka, should we write without dot or with dot, sir? That alone. If a question comes, write a uh, begat kepat letter, then only write this six letter without dagesh. If a question comes, uh, write the begat kepat letter with dagesh lene, then only you have to write the dagesh in that. Okay, sir. Okay. Yes, sir. Okay. So already I told you, uh, Dagesh, Dagesh is the piercer. It is a dot that is placed in the bosom of a letter. Now, Dagesh Forte is called a uh, doubling dot it is called a doubling dot and it can occur in all hebrew letter except guttural already i told you doubling dot can occur in all hebrew letters except gutturals now tell me which are the guttural letters lifetime you have to remember gutturals alif <coughs> Hmm. Alef, He, Ket, Ain, and Resh. Sometimes Resh. Hmm? Sometimes Resh. Alef, Ket, Ain, and Resh. Uh, what happens when we put Dagesh Pote, it doubles the letter. Hmm? So it is also called doubling Dagesh. So there are three names of this Dagesh Pote. One is Dagesh Pote. It is also called strong Dagesh because Dagesh Lene is the weak Dagesh. So this is a strong Dagesh. And third name is doubling dot or doubling Dagesh because it doubles the letter. And this Dagesh Forte is also used for compensation purpose. Compensation. Now, what is compensation? For example, I'll give you here one uh, this mean is the preposition mean plus melek. Mean plus melek. Mean means from. Melek means king. From. I want to say from a king. So when in Hebrew I want to write this mean preposition with melek, what happens? Uh, this Hebrew, they don't like N sound. N sound. So this noon is assimilated with the first root letter of this first word melek. So here the word formed is mim melek. 
Mim Malek. So you will not find Noon over here because Noon has lost. And for the loss of that Noon, they put a compen for the compensation of that Noon, they put a doubling dot or Dagesh Pote in the first root, root letters, Busam. So the pronunciation will be Mim Malek. Mim Malek. Everyone pronounce Mim Malek. Mim Mim Malek. Mim Malek. Yeah. So this mm -hmm. Dagesh Pote is used for compensation purpose. Okay. I will spend. I, I will take one more lecture on this chapter three. One more lecture because there are some rules of this Begat Kepat letter. This Begat Kepat letter is having uh, three rules. Now, if I'll explain, we'll go over your head. Uh, when Begat Kepat letter is preceded by the vowel, then that time Dagesh is employed in certain situation. There are three situations uh, that I will explain in the next session. So any doubts? There are certain rules about this Begat Kepat letter and you need to remember that rule. Otherwise, you will be, uh, it will be difficult for you to pronounce when this Begat Kepat letter comes. So that's why next time, uh, next session, I will take on that. The rules about the Begat Kepat letter, Dagesh Tene and Dagesh Pote. So next session, we'll finish chapter three. So till then, I request all of you to complete assignment number two. Any doubts so far? No? No, no. Thank you. Uh, to every batch, I share this uh, word, and to your batch also, I will share this word. Uh, can you read what is written here? Amen, Salak, Velak, Veliak. Amen, Salak, Velak. Or we can say, Amen, Salak. Velak. Amen. Velak. 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 What is the meaning? Yeah, I'm going to share that meaning. Uh, it's very interesting as you are learning biblical Hebrew. Uh, and uh, you know, in our midst, uh, Sister Victoria is also there. She also knows he, sometimes God uh, reveals certain things through dreams. Oh. And uh, this uh, Amen Salah Velak is a very beautiful word, and I got in my dream. It was, see here, you might find the date also Friday, 8th Jan 2021. Uh -huh. Can you see that? Friday, 8th Jan. 2021 screenshot of whatsapp message night 2 m ratri dhon was an art winter 2 am i got this dream and i i i feared that i will forget that word till the uh, till morning so actually it is well act but in hurry i write Ulak. There is Velak. Amen Salak Velak. So in my dream, I saw a huge white blocks. And I'm putting my hand on that huge white blocks and I'm saying continuously Amen Salak Velak. On each block, I'm saying Amen Salak Velak. Amen Salak Velak. And when I rose at 208. So I text to myself this 
words. And next day I was very curious to find what is the meaning of Amen Salam Walaq. And I searched scripture and I found this word in Genesis chapter 39, verse 2. I will read first in Hebrew. Vayahi Yahweh et Yosef. Vayahi Ish Matsaliak. Vayahi Bevet Adonai Ha Mitsri. That means Vayahi Yahweh. Yahweh was with Joseph and he was a prosperous man. He was in the house of his master, the Egyptian. Yusuf apne mystery swami ke ghar mein rehta tha aur Yahweh uske sang tha isliye woh bhagyaman purush ho gaya. Hindi make no sense. English yeah. some sense but yeah. he makes all sense. So uh, Hebrew word here it is math salak and the root word is salak. Salak means to prosper. Salak means successful. Mm -hmm. uh, please listen it very carefully and be very focused for next five minutes. In five minutes, I'm going to finish it. But uh, see, when I read that, I was really surprised. Uh, the Lord was, Yahweh was with Joseph and he was a successful, you know, WEB translation, it says he was a prosperous man. And Salak word in Hebrew, it means a successful prosperity, success, okay. prosperity, hmm? both meaning it, uh, it means. And uh, when I heard that, I was filled with joy because see here. Okay. Uh, can you imagine a person in a bondage, a sold as a slave, and in slavery, he was a successful man? He was in the house of his master, the Egyptian, and Bible says that he was a successful one, man. He was a prosperous man. Then, I read uh, Genesis 39, 23. Again, I found the same word. En shar bet ha sohar roe et kol meuma beyado be asher yave itho ve asher hu ose yave matsalyak. Here, the scripture says, the keeper of the prison did not look into anything that was under Joseph's authority because the Lord was with him. That is, Yahweh was with him and whatever he did, Yahweh made it prosper. Again, the word Saliyak. The keeper of the prison didn't look after anything that was under his hand because Yahweh was with him and that which he did, Yahweh made it prosper. Now, once again, I'm asking a question. Can you imagine in the house of bondage that is in prison, can anyone prosper in prison? That means we come to know the true prosperity, true success is not on a position or on a post what you carry. But the true success is you are a successful man. You are very much uh, prosperous man if Yahweh is with you. That's right. The correct mathematics is if Yahweh is with you, no matter wherever you are, you are a successful. You are a prosperous. And that revelation that day I got and I was so happy. And God yeah. gave me that revelation that on uh, whichever block I'm putting my hand, God wants me to say, Amen, Salak. Well, now I, I understood the meaning Salak. Salak means prosperity. Salak means a true prosperity. If Yahweh is with you, you are having low in your bank balance. You are, you are going low in your bank balance, but yet you are prosperous. That's right. You don't have anything. But yet you are prosperous because you have this with you. So mm -hmm. true success, true prosperity is uh, Yahweh Imakem. Imakem means he is with you.
and then i i found um this psalms 45 verse 15 i even i have spoken yeah i have called him i have brought him and he shall make his way prosperous and uh, another american standard version bible uh, it says uh, he will make his way successful so the true prosperity is when yahweh is with you then i uh, search the meaning of lack amen salak lack so lack is uh, the hebrew meaning of the word lack means moisture freshness vigor and i found the scripture portion in genesis sorry in deuteronomy 34 verse 7 umoshe ben me a ve eshrim shana now this is a numeric in uh, Moshe. Moshe, you know God's servant Moshe. Ben Mea means hundred. Ve Eshrim twenty Shana, and he was hundred and twenty years old. Be Moto. Be Moto means uh, when he died. Lo Kahata Eno. Velo nas leko, that is leak. So here that word leak is used. And Moses, a son of 120 years when he died, and his eyes had not become dim, nor did his moisture flate. And again, I found this word in Ezekiel 17, verse 24. Uh, I will read in short. I have dried up moist tree. I have caused dry tree, dry tree to flourish. I, Yahweh, have spoken and have done it. So, layak means greenery. Layak means uh, blessings that is filled with moist. It, God, God doesn't give you a dry blessing. Yeah. Never ever give you dry blessing. It is always a sure blessing. It is always a, he will not give you success or prosperity. Uh, that is dry, dry success. You will say temporary success. No, he will give you firm blessings. Accurate is uh, confirmed. So uh, the revelation that God gave me is uh, he, he will bless you. If Yahweh is with you, uh, you are always prosperous and successful man and whatever you will do uh, you will find prosperity in that you will find you will become a successful man and the blessings that Yahweh Elohim will give you that is a, uh, that is filled with moist that that blessing is a, a confirmed blessing so may Yahweh Elohim bless you all amen thank you so much so can you Unmute and start your video and say after me. Amen Salak Velak. Amen Salak Velak. Amen Salak Velak. We'll say it three times and then we'll stop. Second time. Uh, Amen Salak Velak. Amen Salak Amen. 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 All your families, if, no matter what you are doing, a student, you are working, your housewife, anything you are, but God will make you prosperous. Amen. Prosperity and success. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much. That was so blessed. Thank you. Bless you all. Bless you all. Thank, you. Thank 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 you.